Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Kung Fu Art. Uh, this is our second session of Urban Drawing and Painting. So today we're going to be talking about scale and finding our basic unit of measurement, our center point. Uh, we'll talk about drawing people to help with scale. Um, we'll talk about putting urban furniture and details into our sketches, and we're going to talk about um, using a transparent grid viewer in order to help you um, make good decisions about scale and proportion in your sketching. So what is scale? Scale refers to the size of an object or a hole in relationship to another object or another hole. So that big, huge silver ball in relation to that dude or that person there. Um, in art, the size relationship between an object and the human body is significant. In experiencing the scale of an artwork, we tend to compare its size to the size of our own bodies. Okay? That's easier for us to understand. So when we're drawing in the field, we need to find a basic unit of measurement when we're drawing in order to understand scale. So the height of a doorway or a street lamp can give you a reference point to measure the height of the rest of the objects in a scene you're drawing. Pick a basic unit that is not too big or not too small in relation to your overall composition. Ask yourself, how tall is that building in relation to the one next to it? Or how does the height of that bush compare to the height of the structure it's in front of? Um, in city ones, you might say the bus, right? You might compare the size of the bus to the building, okay? So when you're sketching, finding the center point of your sketch can help you accurately determine how much space you'll need above and below the end to the size of the sketch in order to not run out of room on your paper, okay? So a good way to do that or to find the center point is to use the pencil and thumb measuring method. Um, so you stretch your arm out with your elbow straight and then place the segment you want to want to measure, right, between the top of the pencil or your the pointy part <clears throat> and your thumb. And you compare that measurements to other parts of the seam. So are they twice as long or three times as long, etc. So people can also help create a sense of scale. So adding people to a scene can build that uh, sense of scale in a space. So you can see in this picture here, the little teeny people that are playing soccer on this field are so much smaller than the rest of the scene. OK, and you can really get a sense of the hugeness of that open space compared to the buildings and the other urban um, furniture items. The height of a person is something that everyone can relate to. Right. Add at least one passerby to every sketch without that individual. It may be too hard to know how big the setting really is. So you can see here the people sitting in the grass and of course the trees and how big they are, as well as this building in the background. Um, the people that are wandering in the street um, here give you a sense of the space. Urban furniture and details. So cities and neighborhoods are packed with little details that can help you get a sense of proportion for the entire scene. Don't overlook those details, like you put utility poles, uh, and power lines, the traffic lights, benches, street signs, fire hydrants, cars, etc. Focus on small areas because sometimes uh, large spaces can be overwhelming when you're trying to size them to sketch. So when you focus on those small things, those little details, it can help you build your scene in a different way so so overwhelming. So practice drawing the smaller elements or details first, like those power lines, the poles, and signs to help you establish perspective and proportion. In a simple street scene, 
try to get accurate proportions of doors, windows, and the surrounding activity, like a car or a person passing by. Okay. So in order to do assignments, we're going to need to create a transparent grid viewer, which will also help with extra accuracy when you're determining scale and proportion as you sketch the world around you. So to create a transparent grid viewer, here's what you need. You need a clear plastic of some kind. So you can use a plastic container or box that you recycle. Um, I used a transparent discarded uh, laminating plastic. Uh, you'll need a ruler, scissors, and two permanent markers, per preferably those in two different colors. So take recycle clear plastic container um, or plastic and measure a, and cut a seven inch by nine inch re rectangle out of the clear plastic. You can see I drew with the permanent marker um, and I allowed it to dry so that it'll reduce the smudging, right? Now that I cut it out, I'm going to draw a one inch frame on all sides of the rectangle. Right, so you can see this leaves us that five by seven rectangle in the middle where you're going to draw your grid. So you're going to draw in the five by seven window, measure one inch increments on all four sides, and then connect those marks using that second color of your marker. Of course, let your uh, marker lines dry. Um, in between putting each one down, okay, just so that they don't smudge. All right, then you're going to match with your grid viewer. Use your grid viewer to pan over scenes. Uh, compare sizes of elements in the compositional scenes you choose to sketch. So you can see here, I actually just tape, taped these to the window um, upstairs in the fifth floor of Silver Library. And uh, you can see the street scene and the size of the buildings compared to each other. And if you think about it, if this is your paper, right, a five by seven sheet of paper, you know exactly what you're going to draw in each little square to make your drawing, right? Um, so you can accurately transfer this, these images onto paper in the correct portion and scale. All right. So. Your assignment is to make yourself a grid viewer on, and use it to help you decide on your sketch scenes and use it to help to work on proportion and scale when you're sketching. You're going to use one page of your sketch to sketch three thumbnail sketches, which we talked about last week. Um, three thumbnail sketches, maybe a couple of inches big. Um, in various views of your neighborhood while you're out and about in your local park or from your front porch. It's always nice, like I said, to tape it to the window and draw what you see through your window. Complete a full page sketch of a scene in your sketchbook. So not just a two by two thumbnail, a full page should be completed. You're gonna include color in your full page sketch. So sketch it with a pencil and then add some pen mark and then add some watercolor to it or markers. Use your grid viewer and try the techniques from the lesson to build more accurately scaled detailed image. Okay, lesson for today. Um, thank you uh, and for, for joining us. You can contact me Taylor Glazer at Norfolk.com to sign up for the live virtual class, or if you have questions, uh, visit www.silverlibrary.com for more awesome programs like this, and view this lesson and others on Facebook at Silver Library Kung Fu Art, or at www.silverlibrary.com under the Learn tab. Thank you, and you guys have a wonderful day.